Hello everybody, this is Chuck and I thank you for stopping by my channel and visiting me and my shop. Um, I've got a project I've started, uh, it's going to take quite a bit of time. Um, let, me, uh, let me grab the drawing and uh, we'll take a quick look and then we'll actually look at it further. So I'll hold this guy up here. It's a Milvice build and uh, honestly I think it's over my pay grade. <laughs> it's uh, quite a unique uh, piece and I've started on it. Um, I'm not going to show machining. I'm going to show photographs and talk about my machining. Um, I don't have the talent to do something over my pay grade and talk about it at the same time and try to get it done. But I think you'll find, uh, you'll find it interesting. Um, some of the ways I did my setup, talk about that, and uh, some problems I had also. But so far, uh, Charlie hasn't shown up. Uh, I kicked him out and uh, things are going okay. So let me stop the camera here and uh, we'll turn around and we'll take a quick look at the drawings and then uh, we'll go through with uh, part of the build of this uh, vise. The first part is actually the bed. The, the uh, lower bed is what we're making. Alright, be right back. Okay, I'm going to take a, just a quick run through of the drawings. Um, Morrison Martin Marvin Engine Work. Uh, actually, if you search this, uh, you'll go to their website. You can actually buy this kit. Um, and there's also um, a build video of somebody that's built one of these. They actually built four of them. Uh, it's all done in picture format and some discussion underneath the pictures. So it's at least I have a reference uh, to go to. But uh, so there's the picture of the unit. It does come with a swivel base, which uh, that'll be uh, fun trying to put all the index marks in and the numbers. Uh, we'll get to that down the road though. But you build everything, the handle and all. Uh, page two, an exploded view. I'm going to go through this relatively quick. Page three, there's the uh, bottom base and the handle that you build. And uh, here you start to see chicken scratches already here on it. Now, my friend Carl uh, gave this unit to me. He started it some time ago, and the other day he said, Chuck, I'm never going to build it. Um, why don't you go ahead and build it? I'll give it to you. You promise you build it. So I'm, I'm going to build it. So I had a, uh, he he'd already machined the underside and the top of the bed and the rails. And so I had to go in and check things to find out where things were at and set it up uh, on the pallet there. And um, so we're going to talk about this uh, in a few minutes because we did the counter bores and things, but we'll keep on. The underside of the vise is complete. You can see uh, uh, the only thing I still have to do is uh, these index marks uh, that are 15 degrees off center. Uh, I'll get to that. But uh, so far, so good. One of the things here, it's a uh, tap a hole. Um, it's uh, 172 uh, UNF, which takes a number 52 or 53 drill. should have been 52. Uh, this is uh, 4140 steel casting. Uh, some of this stuff, when I was drilling holes, is just hard spots in it. I've drilled it. Uh, I started playing with the tap. I don't think I'm going to tap them. I don't think I'm ever going to need that. So don't tell anybody that I didn't do it though, okay? But I'm not, I'm not going to snap a tap off in it. The thing is minuscule. Um, hang, hang on a second. Okay, I had to go get it. This, uh, this is a uh, Joe Pie territory and I'm nowhere near Joe Pie territory. There's there's a ballpoint pen. You can see it's smaller than a ballpoint pen. Um, made my little Joe Pye turner, but uh, hey, enough of that. So that's not going to happen. And I was surprised that I had a 172 tap uh, in, in my uh, items. So anyway, there we are on page 5. Uh, page 6, now we're starting with the block. The block is all one piece. You machine it, then you separate it. And here is the unit right here. So you, you end up parting it here. So this all this has to be cleaned up, just a rough casting. 
And what else do we have in here? There's the other part of the vise. Is that in this drawing? No, it's not in this drawing. More of the bed there. There's the ball. You gotta you gotta work on that. That's page seven, movable jaw and segment. And then page eight is the uh, stationary jaw, which is uh, where did that go? Oh, that's right there. It's part of there. There it is, right there. Stationary jaw is there. You got to cut it off. Do the machining on that. Now we have the nut, which is this guy here. That'll be fun to machine. That's page nine. A lot of work there. There's the uh, swivel base, which here it is in the raw casting. So uh, that'll be uh, real unique to do. Kind of looking forward to that. That's going to challenge the living heck out of me. I'll tell you that. Page 10. There's uh, 18 pages total. Some more about the uh, swivel base. More about the swivel base. And uh, swivel parts. And there's a parts kit here that uh, comes with the unit. There's the, uh, the handle. Go through it real quick here. Screw parts. There's, there's your... Uh, there's your screw, your handle screw. Uh, another jaw plate. And then uh, the handle. There's the uh, handle right here that you have to machine. And uh, body machining. This was a um, fixture that uh, if you go online, you'll see that the fella. They, just, they said that this fixture was a great way to do all the machining. You're going to see how I set it up in my mill on a pallet. Uh, since Carl had already started it, it was really no sense on me trying to do this. And a parts list. So uh, let's, uh, let's go to a couple of photos. I'm going to do a little talk over on the photos uh, of, of machining. And then uh, we'll go over to the mill and you'll see what's set up in the mill right now also. Hang with me, okay? Hope I didn't put you to sleep yet. This is a uh, photograph. I've already started working on the unit. You can see the vice bed is on the pallet and it's got a sacrificial piece of uh, aluminum underneath it. There's a stop on the far left side and the vice is pinned down. You can't see it, but there is a quarter inch hole uh, that's... Uh, got a quarter inch dowel in it into the aluminum plate. I've already checked the alignment, so everything is on center and uh, running true to the uh, mill. The couple of red marks there you see are the layout for the holes for the fixed jaw, which I am getting ready to drill. And uh, we'll move on and talk about this some more. So here I've turned the vise over on the pallet and the quarter inch dowel locates it and then the the two pins on the right one is for the fixed jaw uh, that goes down that I've already drilled and then there's a small holes you can see one on the left these are for the keyways uh, that get milled into the bottom of the vise um, so I'm just getting ready to I've get making sure everything's aligned and then I was going to machine the slots for the keyways and uh, actually I had a failure which uh, I'll discuss here um, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Now when I said it failed um, I had to cut the slots in for the bottom of the vise for the keys and I had already cut the two um, in the Y, and I had cut the far one on the X to the right. And now I moved over to cut the one by the clamp there. Made my first pass uh, from outside towards the clamp. Everything was fine. Dropped down 10 thousandths, I think. Turned to come back, and the end mill bit and threw the part in the 
vise. Those pins on the right were not installed. So I had to go back and get everything realigned on the uh, bed again uh, before I could continue on. Here I've turned the uh, vise back over on the uh, pallet and uh, the all the machining is done and just completed the uh, slots for the fixed uh, jaw for the keyway there and uh, it's ready to move on. In this photo I've now turned the vise vertical I'm on center since the bottom of the pallet uh, has a key, which you can see. We'll, we'll see it in another picture here. You'll understand it. But so it was very simple just to uh, use the edge finder to uh, find the edge of the bed there, the face of the bed, and then move over so that I could drill um, and ream the hole for the uh, screw. Uh, so it was a real simple setup, added another other, uh, stop block underneath it just to make sure things wouldn't move on me, and uh, we'll continue on here. Okay, this is the uh, setup for the counter bore. And if we look down in there, it's a 200 thousandths deep counter bore by uh, 400 thousandths uh, wide. Luckily, I had the actual tool to do it. Um, I actually had a second tool to do it. And we're going to talk about that. But you can see I got a jack here, and I got an angle plate, and I've got the uh, angle cube, and it was a pretty simple setup to start. Since this pallet has this uh, piece underneath, which was holding it in the horizontal, all I had to do is set it up in the vertical, and I'm still on center. Then I just came over with a uh, edge finder, find the edge, and I know my depth for doing all my work. That's how I ended up uh, getting the counter bore when it was on the other side of the mill. Well, so I said, okay, pretty simple. Got the counter bore. Yeah, I made this one first. Um, it was a quickie. Figured it was just going to be a simple cut since I had already done counter bores on the bottom of the of the vice bed and it went real well. Well, started off and it was not cutting. It was not cutting. And you'll notice this piece here, this this guy is set up that you can uh, adjust your depth real quick. So you, you, you don't have to move all the screws up and down. Well, I had it on top so that the, you, the ram, the, the quill, would not go back up inside the head. Even though I had tightened the living Jesus out of that guy. And doing that pressing so hard down on it to get the counter bore to cut I was actually moving the pallet out of plumb so I had to put the angle block how to put the how to put the um, jack to hold it square well finally gave up on this guy that it wasn't going to cut and dug around dug around and sure enough I had a, f a four flute and I had to modify the pin that goes into the quarter inch hole there and I had to take uh, 20 thousandths off it and I've got I've got a whole arrangement of those pins so Got it all set up and had to make an adapter for it because the length of it, just like I had done with this guy, I needed length and so I made an adapter for it, silver soldered the tool bit into the adapter and tried to cut. And 
I was getting nowhere, just nowhere at all. It started to cut and then it stopped. And so I ended up, I've got some extra long drill bits. So I went in with a 3 8 drill bit and it, it just hammered. I mean, just hammered. The dial indicator up here on the quill was just rocking and rolling. The material, the 4140 steel casting, had a hard spot in it. And I didn't have a piece of carbide tooling to go through it. So I managed to just continue to fight. I had to sharpen this guy, I think, three times. And once it got through the hard spot, it was it took it was about 75 thousandths down through it, 80 thousandths. Uh, then it started to cut okay. So that's my uh, my story here on the uh, counter bore, um, and uh, the vice is it's all ready to actually come out of it, out of the uh, pallet, and uh, move on to the next part. All the machining work is done on this. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, my discussion about this. I've got a ways to go. Um, it'll be a fun uh, fun project. And I said, like I said in the start, it's over my pay grade. It's going to be a heck of a challenge. And I'm fortunate that I have the uh, tooling necessary so far. All right. Again, thanks for uh, stopping by. I hope you have a safe and uh, happy 4th of July. And uh, we'll catch you soon as we update around the shop here.